Carl Sagan, Pale Blue Dot, A Vision of the Human Future in Space. The Voyager spacecraft are bound for the stars. They're on escape trajectories from the solar system, barreling along at almost a million miles a day. The gravitational fields of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune have flung them at such high speeds that they've broken the bonds that once tied them to the sun. Have they left the solar system yet? The answer depends very much on how you define the boundary of the sun's realm. If it's the orbit of the outermost good-sized planet, then the Voyager spacecraft are already long gone. There are probably no undiscovered Neptunes. If you mean the outermost planet, it may be that there are other, perhaps Triton-like planets far beyond Neptune and Pluto. If so, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 are still within the solar system. If you define the outer limits of the solar system as the heliopause, where the interplanetary particles and magnetic fields are replaced by their interstellar counterparts, then neither Voyager has yet left the solar system, although they may do so in the next few decades. But if your definition of the edge of the solar system is the distance at which our star can no longer hold worlds in orbit around it, then the Voyagers will not leave the solar system for hundreds of centuries. Weakly grasped by the sun's gravity in every direction in the sky is that immense horde of a trillion comets or more, the Oort cloud. The two Voyager spacecraft will finish their passage through the Oort cloud in another 20,000 years or so. Then at last, completing their long goodbye to the solar system, broken free of the gravitational shackles that once bound them to the sun, the Voyagers will make for the open sea of interstellar space. Only then will phase two of their mission begin. Their radio transmitters long dead, the spacecraft will wander for ages in the calm, cold, interstellar blackness, where there is almost nothing to erode them. Once out of the solar system, they will remain intact for a billion years or more as they circumnavigate the center of the Milky Way galaxy. We do not know whether there are other spacefaring civilizations in the Milky Way. If they do exist, we don't know how abundant they are, much less where they are. But there is at least a chance that sometime in the remote future, one of the Voyagers will be intercepted and examined by an alien craft. Accordingly, as each Voyager left Earth for the planets and the stars, it carried with it a golden phonograph record encased in a golden mirrored jacket, containing, among other things, greetings in 59 human languages and one whale language, a 12-minute sound essay, including a kiss, a baby's cry, and an EEG record of the meditations of a young woman in love. 116 encoded pictures on our science, our civilization, and ourselves. And 90 minutes of the Earth's greatest hits. Eastern and Western, classical and folk, including a Navajo night chant, a Japanese shakuhachi piece, a pygmy girl's initiation song, a Peruvian wedding song, a 3,000-year-old composition for the Chin called Flowing Streams, Bach, Beethoven, Mozart, Stravinsky, Louis Armstrong, Blind Willie Johnson, and Chuck Berry's Johnny Be Good. Space is nearly empty. There's virtually no chance that one of the Voyagers will ever enter another solar system. And this is true even if every star in the sky is accompanied by planets. The instructions on the record jackets, written in what we believe to be readily comprehensible 
scientific hieroglyphics can be read and the contents of the records understood only if alien beings somewhere in the remote future find Voyager in the depths of interstellar space. Since both Voyagers will circle the center of the Milky Way galaxy essentially forever, there's plenty of time for the records to be found, if there's anyone out there to do the finding. We can't know how much of the records they would understand. Surely the greetings would be incomprehensible, but their intent may not be. We thought it would be impolite not to say hello. The hypothetical aliens are bound to be very different from us, since they're independently evolved in another world. Are we really sure they could understand anything at all of our message? Every time I feel these concerns stirring, though, I reassure myself. Whatever the incomprehensibilities of the Voyager record, any alien ship that finds it will have another standard by which to judge us because each Voyager is itself a message. In their exploratory intent, in the lofty ambition of their objectives, in their utter lack of intent to do harm, and in the brilliance of their design and performance, these robots speak eloquently for us. But being much more advanced scientists and engineers than we, Otherwise, they'd never be able to find and retrieve the small, silent spacecraft in interstellar space. Perhaps the aliens would have no difficulty understanding what is encoded on these golden records. Perhaps they would recognize the tentativeness of our society, the mismatch between our technology and our wisdom. Have we destroyed ourselves since launching Voyager? they might wonder, or have we gone on to greater things? Or perhaps the records will never be intercepted. Perhaps no one in five billion years will ever come upon them. Five billion years is a long time. In five billion years, all humans will have become extinct or evolved into other beings. None of our artifacts will have survived on Earth. The continents will have become unrecognizably altered or destroyed. And the evolution of the sun will have burned the earth to a crisp or reduced it to a whirl of atoms. And far from home, untouched by these remote events, the voyagers, bearing the memories of a world that is no more, will fly on.